So you want to be a Marine Corps officer and lead enlisted guys like me. Let's look at OCS and hear it, what it's like from an enlisted guy looking in at OCS. A sergeant, yes, a sergeant. Aye, aye, Tony Sark. Aye, aye, Kennedy. Carry on. Yes, Tony Sark. That's what he will say. You're Sammy. Yes, Tony Sark. So open your mind. Get over here right now. Run, Tony Sark. You figure, since this is probably the 11-week course, right? So you've got a six-weeker and a six-weeker. If you're on ROTC, you do, right, for OCS. This is the 11-weeker, 11-week course. So they're in college. They decide, I want to be an officer in the Marine Corps. So I'm going right to OCS. So point of all that is most of these guys have no clue, right? Maybe they prep them a little bit. Here's the rank structure. But, you know, probably... Two months ago, they were at a frat doing a keg stand or they were reading a book about their history major, and now they're getting trained, trained to lead Marines, including the ones that are instructing them. Isn't that interesting? Get away from me! Get away from me! Get away from me! I'm going to go start doing things! Hey, 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 I'm going to you know, there is a lot of that stuff where your Sharpies are your friends. I mean, you know, in, the, in Marine Corps boot camp and OCS, just in training, you know, marking all your gear so your, your rack mate doesn't have it. It's just a matter of, like, these guys, how can they follow simple direction? Can they mark their gear? Can they do what they're told when they're told to do it? And the answer is going to be no, they can't. <laughs> now, I'm going you know, that squad bay looks small, like just really narrow. Um, having never been to Quantico in these barracks, it's just narrow because there's not a lot of room for these candidates to get around without running into one of these instructors. And I know there's a camera here, but one of those candidates runs into one of these instructors. I am sure there's hell to pay. You know, and the point of this drill, right? So I'll hear a lot of guys, because the Marine Corps really prides themselves on drills. So I'll hear my Army brothers or Navy guys say, why do you Marines take all this pride in drill, right? And it's not the drill that matters. Yeah, it's cool to see the Marine Corps silent drill team. Really awesome. If you've ever seen them, definitely do that. But what it does is build team cohesion. You got to do things at the same time. You got to do it how you're told to do it, very precisely. Attention to detail. Why does any of that matter at all? Well, you're doing down the street, downstream, doing um, exercises, cover and move, any kind of exercise in the field, you got to do it as a team. You got to do when you're told, how you're told. And this is what instills it. It does build some discipline because you want to scratch, right? You got that head that's itching. You've been out there drilling all in the afternoon, hot summer day in Quantico or Paris Island. You want to get that sand flea, you can't. And you learn, okay, I'm going to be fine. Even though it itch driving you nuts, you learn, okay, I can move through that. It's that little stuff, you know, that little stuff like where I've got these guys grinding on me about uh, the <laughs> Royal Marine thing, look below, about how you don't need to yell at them. Well, yelling gets a point across, and it does bring up the stress level, and that's part of the training, right? You know, and them saying those little ditties, you know, they're doing port arms, bringing it up, port arms, right? They're saying the ditty, so it's a word's got a certain length of time. That's how they, so they bring the weapon up together. So they get in sync, basically. It's just a way for them to get in sync. Because if you may have one guy jerking it up, one guy doing it slower, one guy doing it like Gomer Pyle, you know, so this is the way to get people in sync. And you'll see that when they march, when they do weapons training, and that's in boot camp or in this case at OCS. You know, you don't have many officers marching in zero in a formation, right? Except for OCS or maybe the basic school. 
And then after that, they may be in head of a formation, but they're not doing drill, right? I don't remember an officer really ever doing drill. You know, you'll have your platoon sergeant getting you up. You're not doing drill out of boot camp, but you're know, marching you somewhere for formation. Officer comes up and, you know, the platoon sergeant salutes. But there's not a lot of officer engagement, bottom line, in drill um, outside of, you know, some sort of training scenario. When you get to the fruit, you will get fruit. You are semi. You know, so all this kind of stuff, right, what does it do? Again, it builds cohesion. We all found the same direction. We do it the same way. And that doing it the same way, that regimented process, translates to when you're in battle or when you're in training that we can do a regimented process. I need these three guys to go here, cover these guys. And I need you to move, cover and move. I need you to do this exercise. So you're just following things that is ingrained in your head from going to the chow hall to doing drill. That's why they do all this stuff, right? Even the ba even at OCS. You will get salad. You understand me? Yes, yes, get up right now. Yes, I'm out. One, two, three. Follow up right now. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Follow up. Follow up. Let's go. Yes, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Go. 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 Yes, Follow up. Hey, if you like what you're watching, please hit the thumbs up, share the video with friends, and of course, leave comments. Good ones or bad ones, put it below. I just got done saying something about your covers, did I not? Yes, okay, so why do I look around and see covers still looking like trash? Face your cover on that buddy in front of you, do we understand? Yeah, that's the thing. This is pretty early on, obviously, because they don't even know how to wear the covers. You know, little stuff that will become ingrained and probably two weeks, the beginning, they tell you how to do it. They tell you exactly how to wear your cover, how to blouse your boots, but you don't know, right? There's so much coming at you, and it's just a different culture. It's like going to China, and they you speak English only. You know, that difficult of a transition, but it happens fast, and everything's there for a reason. These guys know what they're doing. Just talking about suicide, about suicide <laughs> You may have guessed. So that's the part I think it would suck being an officer and it sucks being as a staff NCO is now you become the HR department, right? Now you got to deal with all the problem children. People in, under your command that can't do things right, the, the DUIs, he just talked about suicide stuff. You know, that's the part of the job that when you think about the military, you think about doing the the work, right? Jumping out of the plane, landing and doing some exercise, or going to the battle. Officers, once you get the senior, you're about a senior captain, now you're just a big manager, right? Potential paper pusher, dealing with garbage, like this guy's talking about in the, this, you know, class here. In Iraq, last year. You know, that's the thing in these trainings, especially, or these uh, classroom sessions in boot camp, obviously in OCS too, you get in these air conditioned rooms and they turn the lights off sometimes, there'll be guys nodding off everywhere, you know. And what you'll do, and I still do to this day, is you'll start getting up and standing up in the back of the room. Because they'll whack you on the back of the head and you'll get up and stand in the back of the room. Of course, then when you leave the classroom, you're pushing. You're paying. You know, mountain climbers, side starter hops, you know, bends and thrusts, you're paying. Here, young Marine calls home, talks to. There they go. <laughs> She says she's found somebody else. She don't want him. She don't need him. There ain't no reason for him to come home. You know, so that's the big difference. You just said he's got liberty coming up, right? So, in boot camp, in Marine Corps boot camp, there's no liberty. So, I don't know how much liberty they get. I'm sure it depends off room inspections, pass, etc., etc. But there's liberty coming up. Um, there is none in, when you're a listed guy in boot camp. I don't think they should have an OCS. I think they should, for the training, to make you a basic Marine, they should have the same training. And then if they're going to decide, okay, you're an officer, you're going to be a manager or leader, maybe a secondary training. But splitting up the training to me is dumb to begin with because these guys are still basically boots with a college degree. And most of them have a degree in like you know history or something. We're not talking the hard sciences, right? I'm not against officers, but let's be real. Very short time. First impressions count. 
You know, the last haircut, or maybe the one before the last in boot camp, so they start giving you, you know, high and tight. They let a little hair grow in. And you think you're the coolest guy ever because you get your hair head shaved the whole time, right, in boot camp. Maybe the one or two before last, they kind of zip it up a little tight on the sides. So you've got a little bit of hair and the tights are, you know, shaved. So you feel good about it. That's a big deal. I guess these guys, after the first one, they can get it cut. You know, I'm sure they have to have a high and tight and not just a regulation haircut. Hey, how many of you guys have been to that museum? I have not. I keep saying every time I'm in the area, in the D.C. area, I'm going to go. But put that in the comments below. How many of you guys have been to the, the Marine Corps History Museum? I hear it's just outstanding. If we're down to the last canteen of water, we share that canteen of water. If we're down to the last few rounds of ammunition, we redistribute that ammunition because the blood that we bleed is Marine Corps blood. It's the branding of it. You know, that is the one thing I never understood about the military. Instead of just saying, okay, everybody come in to a training. Let's evaluate who the manager is going to be and who are the worker bees going to be. I don't care if you've got a degree in history from Podunk U. That doesn't make you a good manager. And that's what really separates officers from enlisted is you got a degree, right? Now, you could be a list of guy with a degree, but you get accepted to OCS. And there's a little more to it than that. But I know some staff sergeants that are far, far better leaders than any captain I've ever met. And that's the way it is. It's kind of a dumb system. It's the government's shocker. And I'm not against officers, but being out for a long time, being in the corporate business world, I would never run my business that way. Hey, question for you guys. and Put it in the comments below. Who's been to boot camp as an enlisted? Who's been to OCS? So, one or the other. Now, how many enlisted guys here have gone to OCS? So, put that below. That's the question. And then, part two of that question is, for those of you that have been to boot camp and been to OCS, which do you think was harder? I know the academics in OCS is supposedly harder. And maybe the PT, because you're older then, you know, maybe it seems harder. But put that in the comments below. I'm really curious to see what your answers are. You know, climbing ropes are one of those things that if you're going to OCS, going to boot camp, practice climbing ropes first. Not the dumb ropes with the knots on them. Because once you get the tech, they'll show you the technique like this warming up technique. Um, or I used to just climb ropes just with my arms because I was capable of doing it. Whatever mechanism gets you up that rope the fastest, right? But practice that because that is a, a technique Obviously, you can't be weak, but a technique-driven thing that you have to do. If you're not capable when you're there, it could be a struggle for guys. Struggle is real on that one. You need to pay attention. You know, in drill, and it applies in OCS too, you always have like 10% of people that are total F-ups. You know, they're always screwing up, especially in drill, where that one guy who's screwing up or two, they stick out like a sore thumb for the rest of everybody who's doing it right. It really, I mean, you can see it. It's like wearing a, a orange hunting shirt in the middle of the woods. You That stands out. Those guys that suck at drill stand out. You're the combat course. You're the combat course. All I ask is to give 110% at all times. And make sure you're making a lot of noise. Yes, Are there any questions over any gas they're coming in off? I'm going to poke at officers for a second. That must be an officer thing where that enlisted staff NCO had to tell the officer candidates, you're not going to complain, you're not going to whine. I mean, in boot camp, that would, A, never happen. You wouldn't even open your, you know, your pie hole. But I guess he has to say, you're not going to complain and whine. Um, any of you officers out there, you know, Roast me on that if I'm wrong, but it sounds like there's some whiners showing up at OCS. You know, that's another thing that's all technique, like the slide for life or, 
you know, um, a technique kind of driven thing. If you follow what they tell you and you're remotely coordinated, you better do it. If you don't, it's very challenging. It's not like something you're just going to be good at or athletic at. You got to listen to what they say to do these ropes. To fail for booby traps and mines. Let's go. Go to the next one. Let's go. Good security. Check is maybe if you put your chin strap tight, like I told you, your helmet wouldn't be falling off. You know, this is pretty typical stuff you do in boot camp. Um, you definitely do it in infantry training or MCT, depending on what your MOS is. You know, it's nothing different than enlisted guys are doing. You know, you're pulling security for each other so you can get across the stream or whatever, you know, you're covering each other and somebody's moving and then they're moving and you're covering for them, vice versa. You know, that's just the way this pretty standard deal. Yeah. Say something. Let's go! My God. Two in the green, let's go! Your head should be the other way. Toes the other direction. There you go. There you go. Uh, one, two, three. I don't know why this is always a thing. There's this, I guess the Quigley, maybe that's the name of it, where they go in this uh, culvert underwater. Why that's a big thing, I do not get it. Yeah, water's dirty. You're going underwater. You're coming up the other side. If you're scared of water, maybe the Marine Corps, you know, pick up the Marine part. You shouldn't be doing it, right? Maybe pick some other military branch. But uh, I just never get why it's a big deal. Two, three, drop. All right, got Put your BFA on your one. Go underneath with your free hand. Let's go! Yeah, man, man. Boy! You know, that is always an S show. So, I, again, for you guys, haven't been in this kind of training. If you're scared of water, you're going to have a problem with this. You're not getting on your knees, man. You're still low falling forward. You're doing that. Hey, you do it for this one work. Right the team leader. Get the team across the wall. I can tell you the suckiest part of this whole thing is cleaning the weapon when you're done. By far. Between shooting blanks... And then, you know, going through that nasty swamp and dirt. That's probably the easy. The swamp and the dirt's probably easy. But shooting the blanks, the things get so fouled. So that's going to be the worst part for these guys at the end of the day, getting that back to the armory. Contact! Enemy! So, you know, we get contact. You're going on patrol, we get contact. They've been told, here's what's supposed to happen. Here's a team leader, right? So looking at what's the team leader doing here. So how's a team leader directing his squad what to do when they get contact? You know, contact right. How What are they doing? Are they fanning out? Who's doing what? Is the team leader taking control? That's the purpose of this exercise because in OCS, you will get graded from the top down and the bottom up by your peers to say, or at least by your peers will grade you, does this guy suck as a team leader or is he good as a team leader? So that's the point of these kind of things, to swap up team leaders and, you know, it's a good exercise. That right there is why it's good to have several pairs of boots. I'm sure they got two pairs. You know, and in training, you're not trying to get two pairs wet two days in a row because you end up with some wet boots. Um, but when you're on exercise or deployed, you know, you get your boots wet two days in a row, you're wearing wet boots, right? Unless you find a way to get them dry. So, and if you got wet boots, guess what? You got wet socks. And then you're going to have ch your feet chafing. So, it could be a cycle. And look below. I got a good video on how to take care of your feet when you're marching, you know. With good experience as an infantry guy, I can tell you, your feet are your lifeblood. That gets you made to beat. If you don't take care of them, I'm telling you, that'll set you back and get you, A, not deployed, B, kicked out of training, at least set back in training. So, you know, having dry boots is key. Having dry socks is key. And you can't have dry socks without dry boots. So, that's a real issue in real, the real world after training. So what they got going here is an inspection, right? So this would be company commander's inspection or, you know, platoon sergeant's inspection, whatever. They're going through and looking at their weapons. So they had that nasty day where they're out 
going through the field exercise. Now he's taking out the bolt carrier group and saying, hey, did you clean the thing? You rub your pinky in the bolt carrier or inside the receiver, just inside the, the tail towards the front towards the barrel. You can see stuff. And that's the thing you got to do because these guys are going to do it and they're going to pick you apart. And then, you know, it makes your life more difficult and the platoon's life more difficult. You know, so there he goes, checking his fingernails, right? Just like you see in the um, Full Metal Jacket where they're checking their feet, checking their hands. You know, in boot camp, checking your feet, right? To make sure you're taking care of your feet. You got your blisters popped, you're cleaning them, they're not getting infected. Check, but this inspection, it's the same thing. They want to make sure you know how to groom yourself. You cut your nails, you cut your cuticles, you have nose hair sticking out. Do you have Irish pendants on your utilities? All that stuff matters. Again, why? Attention to detail. People pay attention. So if you pay attention to the little stuff, the big stuff will come in line is the theory, right? So that's why they have these inspections. Now in the real world, you have inspections, yeah, periodically. Um, but you know, hopefully you got your s, your you know, your shit squared away enough where it's not as big of an issue. I can't tell you as an enlisted Marine, you're not going to run across too many colonels, right? <laughs> um, you know, when you deal with officers, you got a company commander, right? A captain, maybe at some kind of battalion event, or maybe you have a, you know, a, an XO somewhere that comes, a major. Tenant colonel, but you're just not seeing many full bird colonels. A, I don't think ever doing inspections. I think this is maybe just an OCS is what they do, but you know, you see a full bird generally not doing inspections. I guess an OCS is the thing. Ladies, you come down here and get a picture with me anytime you want. Five bucks a pop. I'm only kidding. You want to get a picture? Come on! Beauty, you want one more? No, that's a good I would tell you that today everybody's snapping pictures of everything and hard to save them because you got so many pictures. This is the kind of stuff I was looking back. I wish I would take more pictures when I was in of stuff that was memorable. Now, granted, I'm an old timer, so you're dealing with film cameras and whatever, but take your pictures, keep them somewhere. So when you look back 30 years from now, and you go, yeah, I remember when I was a young second lieutenant or when I was a young PFC. You know, it's good to remember those pictures because you'll turn around and you'll be 50 years old and you're like, where'd things, where'd everything go? You know, that's really going to be important. <laughs> your son and my son are both graduating. And that's important stuff, you know that. So that's pretty interesting. The colonel's son is graduating. So you figure the lady in the stands, her son was graduating second lieutenant. The colonel's son was graduating second lieutenant. So, you know, he must be a believer in the Marine Corps. He asks his son's going to the Marines. That's pretty cool to watch his son graduate. He's significant challenge these last six weeks. Many of them didn't make... All right, so... I thought at the beginning it's an 11-week course. I never watch these until I do it. So it's a six weeks. So if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But what I understand it is like your sophomore year, I think, you get a six-weeker. And then the end of your junior year or so, you get another six-weeker, maybe senior year. So eventually you get 12 weeks to finish OCS. So that's if you're an ROTC or one of the programs. A few other programs, I'm no expert at all in that. If you're just going straight OCS, 11-weeker. So these guys are the end of the six-week program. So there's a name for it. You guys can figure, look that up. We all know, as I talked about the other day, but those that stand before us are ready to become Marine Corps officers. And I, too, am like you. I have a son in Echo Company, and so I know that special feeling that you all have. He yeah, actually some beef jerky and some Gatorade. You down? So that's one thing you will remember. Or I remember, I should say. 
after boot camp, after OCS in this case, the first thing he thought about was, I'm going to go eat something, <laughs> you know. Um, these guys looked like they had some liberty, so I don't think they were starving. When you get done with boot camp, if you guys are going enlisted, when you get done, you're going to want to eat stuff that you've been thinking about. Maybe it's that big pizza and a cold beer. Maybe it's some ice cream, whatever. That's the kind of stuff that becomes important. You're like, wow, I really want to eat that thing you hadn't had. Hey, thanks for watching.